Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Sony FS700 camcorder, which will be uh, which will be used for tech tips purposes. This is uh, this is a oh, it cost a lot of money. So yes, this was something I legitimately purchased in order for us to bring you all kinds of higher quality production values and all kinds of good sort of stuff. Let's see what Sony has to say for themselves on the outside of this very, very boring brown packaging. So here's a bunch of hoo-ha about trademarks and registered trademarks and whatnot. Here's a big warning right on the top of the box. Damage to this unit verifiably, verifiably caused by the use of non-infolithium batteries will not be covered by the warranty. Uh, when using SD, class 4 or faster is recommended. All right, we've got a Super 35 CMOS Exmor, whatever that is probably the sensor in all likelihood. It has a 4K sensor in it, that's something of note, so you have to get a firmware upgrade later on down the line to get 4K support. They're estimating it'll cost $500 to $1,000, which still makes it a great value for 4K capture, but I think is absolutely ridiculous for um, just charging for firmware. That's not, my, my IT industry roots would, uh, would, would disagree with that particular approach. So AVCHD is how it captures to cards. However, it also has the option of capturing to HDMI just with uh, using an HDMI output and a capture card such as the Intensity Pro from Blackmagic, which I also purchased. So, okay, we have one of those microphone doodads. Let's just go ahead and Open it up, so a wind blocker. Let's just, yeah, okay, forget it. I'm not gonna be able to open that, you know what? Open, thank you. There we go, just a simple foam one. Foam, there, fascinating. Interchangeable lens, digital HD video recorder. Okay, operating guide, very, very short. Limited warranty here, so labor is for 90 days and parts is one year. One year warranty on this thing. Good thing I bought it with my Visa, which has an extended one year warranty. Content management utility. Okay, interchangeable lens, digital HD. Oh, there's the real manual on a disc. Hey, way to go, Sony. And then here's apparently another one. Here's an operating guide. Setting the headphone sound, all that kind of good stuff. This is all, no, oh, this is all English. Wow, okay. All right, what else have we got in here? Is that an eyepiece? I don't know. I'm not much of a camera guy. Actually, Diesel is the one who's going to be showing me how to use all this stuff. So I'm just excited about the fact that we're going to have a... Okay. Hmm. Magnify. Very cool. I'm just excited about the fact that we're going to have a... Uh, a much better a much better camera overall and that someone will be operating it and that we will be able to bring you better better overall production values will be able to set like you know depth of field and stuff like that so that you know it'll have like kind of that blurry background and just generally look better this thing can capture it up to 960 frames per second which is also kind of cool um, although it doesn't really capture any kind of decent quality at that frame rate and it can only capture for I think a couple seconds but you can get some pretty reasonably long captures at reasonably high quality at as high as 240 FPS which was, is great for like slow motion and that kind of stuff that uh, we will obviously be playing with if we're going to be investing this much into equipment you know you got to make sure you're using it so it comes with a microphone Okay, there's the microphone that matches that uh, foam condom thing that goes on top of it, right there. Okay, however, we're going to be using a different mic, so we'll be using an NTG2 from Rode. There you go. That one comes with a 10-year warranty. See, they understand how to stand behind an expensive product. This camera's like $8,500, and uh, they give you a one-year warranty with it. Look at all these accessories and whatnot. This is exciting. So here's a battery charger. VCR slash camera, nice, love it. And then charging, there's a power adapter for it. There's a DC output, so this is, oh, okay, so you're either charging or you're outputting to the camera slash, if you have a VCR that runs off that connector, then I guess you could do that. I guess they mean like video capture recorder. Ooh, okay, this is the lens. So important to be careful with this. I'm not gonna, not gonna play around with this too much. So it's a kit lens. But as far as kit lenses go, uh, my understanding is this one's actually pretty decent. So there's the 
We'll cover for the end piece. Um, looked into getting something that was not a kit lens, but did not end up wanting to go down that route. So here we've got all of our manual, manual controls for focus as well as for zoom. Cool Beans uses an E-mount, so something to be aware of guys is you need an adapter that costs a few hundred dollars if you want to use anything but a Sony native E-mount lens on this camera. Uh, that was again the reason we went with the kit was because to get anything decent that was not the kit lens was going to cost um, at least a thousand bucks. So, so we went that route. Here's a microphone holder. Oh, that's disappointing because I bought one. Oh well. Now we know. What else we got here? Hmm. Okay, so there's your handpiece, which you can use to uh, zoom as well as something to do with focus and photos. So you attach that to the camera. It's a very modular design, much like the FS100. So there's a lot of, of pieces and, uh, and gizmos that you can attach to it in order to customize the experience. Comes with a remote. See, continuing the proud tradition of cheese ball remotes with expensive gear that I've seen time and time again in my years in the, uh, in the IT industry as well as whatever other industry. It just seems to be sort of by law everyone does that. Here's a USB adapter of some sort. I'm guessing that's for pulling footage off the camera. Here's some strap. Hopefully there's instructions to go along with all this. And lots of cables. So here's a component adapter. Component video out. Here is just, is this really just RCA cables? Really? I mean, if I uh, really FS seven hundred, I need RCA. Okay, maybe maybe I'm missing something here. I'm sure I'm missing something, but that just seems brain dead. Okay, here is another. Oh, this looks like the piece to actually run the camera off of. So. There's your, uh, your filter, as well as your wire and power adapter. So in that case, I have no idea what the point of this is. Because that's, that's not even the same, like, anything. That's not even remotely related. Okay, it's okay. Diesel will be able to figure all this out. It won't matter for me. Two power cables for those two pieces for the battery charger, as well as to run the camera. Another USB cable, which I'm sure there's a point to, USB A to Mini B, which is somehow different from this USB cable, which I can't identify what that is. Okay. Ah, info lithium battery. So I'm going to need a bunch of these, I suppose, at some point. All right. That goes there. And now we are left with a battery cover. Yeah, we're not interested in that. Oh, no, that's not a battery cover. What is this? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's open up the camera. Wow, big. It's actually a little bit bigger than I expected. So, bearing in mind I know absolutely nothing, I can already tell this is a lot more baller than the XA10 that we're using to film this. It does come with ND filters, so you can use those to adjust the something to do with the amount of light that comes through or something like that. That was one of the reasons we ended up going with the FS700 versus the FS100. You have to get like little uh, little ND filters to change the quality of the light and put them over top with the FS100, whereas this one it's built in. Uh, we've also got manual controls for pretty much everything and its dog, so that's a huge advantage over something like the XA10 that we've been using up till now, where everything's done via a touchscreen interface that's extremely inconvenient. Uh, the ergonomics on the FS700 are also supposedly quite a bit better than the FS100, although I've never seen either of them in person up till now. So here, do you want to just come in and have a have a close look at the body here? It's not that heavy. Uh, once you throw a lens on it, I guess it's going to add quite a bit of weight. But uh, we've got a new tripod as well that's going to help us with the additional the additional weight requirements that uh, that we have. You know what? Let's throw the battery in and see what happens here, hey? I mean, that's what we do on this channel, right? We just sort of randomly do things, and then we hope that it sort of works. So there's an indicator arrow that, yeah, that didn't work. Oh, there we go. All right. What happens if we turn it on? Power on. And it doesn't come charged. Oh, yes, it does. There we go. And we can set things like the time zone. Okay, forget that for now. So there we go. Face detection, last scene, auto manual mode. Ooh, lots of cool stuff that I totally don't understand. There's the battery release button as well. 
There's your mounting for your tripod. Actually a wide variety of different mounting mechanisms here as well as little rubber feet. So it doesn't go anywhere if you put it down, which is important because it's expensive. Okay, headphone monitor so you can uh, monitor, well, sound just like that. You've also got HDMI out. So this is what I talked about before where we'll be using HDMI out to capture to a Blackmagic card. And then, ah, this one. That's what we're gonna need when, uh, when we're doing 4K out. So that's your HDSDI out which is uh, more flexible cables, um, lighter weight, all of these are good things. However, there's these fancy red mirror cables now. So this is what we'll be using for HDMI capture that you can use 28 AWG wires and still achieve a 50 foot distance on them. So we'll be running that out of here, wrapping it around an arm to make sure it doesn't pull too hard on the connector. And, uh, and going that route. So here's all of your audio controls right here. You control which input and how much and who and what, as well as all the, wow, look at all these dedicated controls for playing back. I guess they really mean for you to use this in the field. It's got a beautiful display on it. Great viewing angle on that. Can you tell from there? Or am I, is it just, yeah, you can't really tell. Okay, awesome viewing angle on there. So they really mean for you to actually be reviewing your footage a little bit to uh, LCD hold. Oh, okay, you can make it, uh, yeah, yeah, you can make the LCD hold in place or you can totally release it so that it's, uh, there we go. Okay, some more mounting pieces, mounting points for all kinds of various accessories and stuff. Like I said, very modular, so you can release this as well and then put different sort of adapters and whatnot. This is, this is for that something. We had some, here we go. This is for this, I think. No, it's not. I have no idea what that's for. You know what, we'll be back. So, yeah. We figured it out, it's, it's for like a flash memory recorder thing, so we put that spacer in there now. Also, uh, there's your inputs for, uh, for audio, one and two, just right there. Uh, you can change modes from video to photo. I really hope you're not taking photos with this thing though, because that's really not what it's for. And uh, that pretty much covers it. So here's your shoe mounts for various accessories and whatnot. So we're gonna build it and then uh, show you guys once it's assembled. So I think we've got it assembled now. Like I said before, we don't really know what we're doing, but uh, we have this camera now. So uh, yeah, it's bigger than I expected. And you know, we've got the microphone attached now. So we ran that to the to the input here. Oh yeah, iPhone size comparison, of course. So there, that's the, here, I'll put that there. iPhone can basically be like an output for this thing, or rather a, like a display for this thing. So it's huge. See, there, there's the iPhone again. There's the thickness and um, yeah, so we figured out what this thing's for. It is an eyepiece. It's just a slight magnification and darkening of the LCD, so you can you can see in there if you were if you were able to see in there. Uh, this doesn't work. The zoom zoom here because uh, Sony doesn't have motorized lenses yet for the E mount. So I don't know what they were planning to do with that. Maybe they'll have it available as a firmware upgrade for five hundred, a thousand dollars. So I think that pretty much covers it. We have to unbox, we have lots more gear to unbox here. I'll show you, we've got Kino Flow lights, we've got Manfrotto uh, tripod, we've got, uh, right, Blackmagic, a microphone, more Kino Flow lights, very exciting stuff. So stay tuned, more unboxings to come.